Over the last couple of months, I've been going super hard at the Reno's content from my Jungle Ray tune. To my Papo and Rainforest track. Finally, to my Shaolin Soul Style tune I uploaded very recently. Time has come. <laughs> so, my bitter friend, you have come to the place where you will finally die. Show him what the moon wave technique is really all about. Whilst I have touched on some of the techniques I used in the breakdowns of those videos, I thought it would be really useful and quite fitting for my last video of the year to have a complete rundown of all my favourite break chopping techniques here in Renoids. Okay, so let's dive right into it and the first thing I want to talk about is hit variations. Now this is just trying to create realism in our drums in the same way that a real drummer every time they hit a snare drum for instance it would have a different tone and it would resonate slightly differently, the pitch would be slightly different, the de decay of the actual note would be slightly different every time they hit it and so that is one of the things that gives realism to the drum sound and so if we're going to do this in a kind of a computer sense in our door Actually, the best thing we can do is just use the different hits from the break rather than just triggering the same snare drum over and over again or the same kick over and over again. If we can trigger these different hits, we can we can not only play with like the groove and the rhythm of those different hits, but it just makes everything sound a little bit more natural when we, when we have different versions of snares and different versions of kicks going on. Another technique I love to use is drum layering and the way I'm doing this here is actually layering directly on my snare hits and I particularly love doing this with other snares so in this instance I'm using long reverb snares actually from my Fotec pack ages ago I'm just reusing stuff I've made before but you can use these hits to kind of accentuate what's happening in, in your break and it just gives like another layer of depth is what it does here and so I'm doing a few cool things with like reverse effects which we'll get into later but I'm just using exactly the same pattern as before but now with this additional layer of snare drums and what you can hear is some of the snares are really obvious and they sound like you've got this affected uh, kind of snare going on top of the break and then other ones um, hit more tonally kind of similar and they're just more exaggerating what's actually happening in the existing snare. Okay, so this next point might come off as really obvious to those of you who have actually drummed in the real world, but I think I probably speak for quite a lot of us where I've only ever uh, learnt how to drum uh, by programming it in the door. And what it is, is about using silence and space and controlling energy in your breaks. And this will make more sense as I go through it, but what I really have here is a kick in the snare, which are kind of the foundation or the building blocks of your um, your drum groove. And it's really about how you space them and also what you put in between them that dictates uh, what's happening with the drums. So to start with, I have a kick and a snare with nothing in between, just with silence. But if I then fill that gap with a hi-hat, 
I can pick up this energy and add a little bit more groove to the break. And if I take that a step further and replace the hi-hat with a shuffle instead, which is really the foundation of jungle and drum and bass, which is a, a ghost snare and a hi-hat combo, I can increase that energy even more. And to do these shuffles in Renoise, it's really easy. What I'm doing here is just taking a original snare from my break and I'm pulling the velocity down quite a lot. And then this CO9 command here is actually just gating it. So I'm like pulling the end of the hit in as well and pulling it down in velocity. And that's how you can make uh, a kind of uh, a bootleg uh, kind of ghost snare out of one of the ones from your break. And then the final thing I use a lot, and I always bang on about creating these long mono reverb kicks and snares, is because you get even more space you can play with with the hits. And so here you can hear a long snare come in. And so with that long snare, I can really slow down the break and create lots of space in the break. And so you have that big contrast between the shuffles happening really quickly and then you can have these long kicks and snares to really slow down the break. And so you can use all of these elements either using silence or hi-hats or shuffles or even double kicks and double snares. All of those things you can use to change the energy of the break as it's happening over like a 16 bar loop. Another thing I love to do is to pitch individual hits for my break up and down. And I do this especially with my kicks and snares. But it's another thing, if you haven't got lots of variations in the original break, you can pitch certain hits up and down to kind of bring in these alternate hits into your break. A really cool thing we can also do with pitch is to modulate our hi-hats and this is really useful in the same way we can modulate velocities to add a little bit of realism or variation to the hi-hats. Pitch is also a really good thing to do and if I come into this modulation section in Renoise we have this really cool stepper and so every time it hits a hi-hat it will basically walk along the steps um, all these different values and the only thing I've really done here is made the pitch range really small so we're only going to be moving like maybe a hundred cents at a time. And all I'm trying to do here with this pitch, and I'm also doing this uh, with a volume stepper, is to change the, make it so every hi-hat hit is a little bit different from the previous one. And that just helps the thing sound uh, less robotic. Probably the coolest technique I know with pitch is actually to do with the gate to tempo technique and I've been through this a lot of times on my channel but it's really a kind of a break warping technique but what it does is it gives us the ability to live pitch around the break and without going into too much detail again in Renoise to do this you essentially have to put slice markers all of your break hits and then you right click and you go slices render slices to phrase and we're essentially making a groove template of our break and then we can warp that groove template to our song BPM so we can actually change our BPM of our track live and everything's going to retain the groove so even though we're speeding up and slowing down the BPM what it will do is just leave silence if there's not enough um, space to do the groove or it will just chop the hits off or gate them uh, if it's too quick but actually when we pitch around our uh, break the same thing happens because when you pitch up a break it actually uh, kind of shortens the hits so when we pitch it up a lot you'll hear it will just introduce silence in between the hits But it's such a cool technique because you can do all this stuff and like modulate it live or automate this stuff happening. Um, and we'll get into more of this later, but I really love using this technique. It's a little bit more of maybe an advanced one to set up, um, but it's really fun to play with. And the other thing I love to do with this gate to tempo technique is actually to mess with the decay of the hits. So in here you can map, if you pull um, sustain out of the ADSR and you just map decay, uh, in your sampler, you can make the hits really snappy.
and you can really control the, the decay of the brake, but it's a much uh, cleaner way. Rather than using a transient shaper, the, 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 there's way less artifacts when you do it in this way, and you just get much more control. You can even bring in um, like hold and things like that as well. Okay, so this next one is a bit of a Renoise specific thing, and whilst you can emulate some of this stuff in other doors, you're never gonna be able to do this in quite the same way as you can in Renoise. And but I will kind of walk you through it anyway. And this is the backwards command, and it's such a cool command to use in Renoise, and I use it in a few ways. And every time you see a B00, I'm basically telling the, the drum hits to reverse. And when you see a B01, I'm telling them to go forwards again. And so what will happen is this hit will play forwards to it hits this B00. And then it will hit that marker and it will play back again. And then it will hit the B01 and go forwards again. But obviously you can't even really hear that happening. So what I'm doing here with this command is I'm actually using it to extend the length of that hit really subtly to make it sound a bit cleaner. And if I take this away, you can hear why I've done it. Can you hear it's almost got like a little jump or like the way the tail of the this kick finishes is just a little bit weird at the end. It kind of jumps into the next hit and I want it to be like a smooth into the next hit. So it's a really subtle thing, but it shows you the amount of control you have with these commands and renoises. You can really kind of so subtly and smoothly there extend that kick hit without it being really audible. Um, but it just sounds more natural to me. So you can use things like that. And then another way I'm doing this uh, is actually with these uh, snare hits. If I come here, here's a more obvious example where I'm doing a big effect where I'm letting it play out for a long time and then rolling it back so it's quite an obvious effect I'm creating here. And it gives you that whip back into the kind of start of the next beat. And then the last thing I'm doing is when you actually put the backwards command directly on a hit, something slightly different is going to happen and it will play from the, re the reverse of the whole hit. So if I just put this B00 command on this hit, you can see it starts right at the end of the whole hit here. But obviously this is just like silence, nothing's happening. So then I can use another command, which is the SSX command, which is my favorite command. And in this way, I can control uh, where it is. You see this ruler on the bottom. I can basically say anywhere on this ruler to start the reverse effect from. Um, and in this way, you can get really cool whip back sounds and kind of really mess with them. You can hear F1's a bit smoother. F3 is a really cool one that I went for. I can create a more obvious kind of reverse flaming with F7. So I get all this control of how I want these reverse effects to sound, um, which is pretty incredible actually. And, I, I, and this would be like slip editing in another door, but you just can't do it as quickly. You know, I can change this re-trigger, change it, re-trigger. It just doesn't, you can't do it in another door. So this is why Renoise just has these elements that make it kind of superior for this kind of uh, really intricate jam funk uh, style workflows. Okay, so onwards we go, and the next thing is gating. And for gating in Renoise, I love this uh, CXX command where it's the cut command. And what I'm saying here to briefly explain it is I'm saying when it hits the cut command, I want to cut this first value. I've put zero, so this is the value of the volume you want to cut to. So I want to cut to nothing. And then the nine is telling Renoise how long it's going to let. Uh, the note play for before it cuts to nothing when it hits this command. And so by default in Renoise, each of these lines, whilst I'm working at four lines per beat there, they are equal to a 16th note in value. What Renoise actually does is it breaks that 16th note down again into 12 ticks. And so this CO9, the nine is actually referring to the number of ticks to cut to. And so I'm, I'm cutting on the ninth out of the 12th tick of this line, which is a 16th note. So you get loads of control um, of how you can use this command. But I use CO9 a lot. I use COB, which is actually the last tick you're cutting on. 
um, as well. But anyway, what I want to show here is you can use uh, these gated uh, commands or this cut command to create this kind of snappy. Kind of more shuffly uh, feeling to your drums rather than letting the hits roll out a little bit more you can tighten them all up and it also even with the same you see i've got the same shuffles here but i've used a co9 on this one and a co4 on this one i can create variations of hits i already have in my break just by shortening some of them you just get that little bit of difference um happening with the ears it's kind of like changing the velocity all these things is just making it so we're not hearing the same drum sounds play over and over again in our breaks Okay, Wicked, so for doing drum rolls in Renoise, it's really easy, and the kind of most basic version of these is just using a velocity roll, like I've done here, with a repeating, I think this is a kick drum. And what I'm actually doing with this second line is by delaying a line by 80 in Renoise, um, I mentioned before, each of these lines at four lines per beat, each line is a 16th note. I can basically create a 30 second note roll um, by just adding a new note layer with a delay value of 80. One other way to do these rolls, which is a little bit more advanced again, is actually to copy a kick or snare to a new track and then to use a forwards loop. And then we can change. The length of the loop to actually change the repeats of the roll. So you can get loads of interesting, maybe variations of like slightly off time uh, rolls, which you would never do if you were just programming them on a grid. So I think that's really cool. And then the other thing you can do is obviously modulate this. And so I'm doing some uh, subtle uh, volume modulation and some panning, some side to side. And then also I've got this uh, filter cutoff. Um, so that's another really cool way to do these drum rolls. Another reason I love these long kicks and snares is because I use them all the time to lead me into breakdowns or into new sections. And it's just much easier than having to program in or automate a like a reverb send. It's just to have a, a long reverb snare you've already made that you can just program in. And on this one, I'm doing a, a delay send. And the cool thing about Renoise is because it's stepped automation, what I'm basically doing is uh, in this step, I'm saying uh, don't send this delay send at all. And then the next step I'm sending to send, I can just move this around really easily. And I can create variations of this delay. Um, and just mess with it, moving this kind of automation around to see what sounds best. Another thing that's really cool to play with is dub delays. And th these can be a little bit tricky to set up and it's taken me a while to actually fully understand how to kind of utilize these properly. But the way for lots of control with these, with these dub delays is this is a really good delay plugin uh, by Waves actually. But What's great about it is you see this feedback, you can go above 100% um, feedback and I've dialed in all of these controls. So I'm going to max is 125 feedback. And what this will do is create a feedback loop. And this is how we create these really kind of authentic dub delays um, is you feed them back on themselves. So they end up repeating, but you'll understand it more as I, as I demo it. So you need to have the ability to create a feedback loop. And this H delay is really good because it actually has it in the plugin. And then the other thing we need to do is to actually be able to turn off the volume before the feedback loop to stop the volume coming in. And so if you look, I've got a gainer before my send here, I've got a gainer. So when I pull down the volume, my break's going to stop sending to the delay and then I can turn up this feedback loop and the delay will just ring out. So if I just show you some examples of this working, um, just kind of playing through this here. So I can just send it off like a cool normal delay. Very standard. But if I turn this feedback up a little bit more, I can 
really control just that feedback of the delay, which is really cool. And then I can bring my, my brake back in. So you've got loads of fun to play with there and I just like the way it sends and you can use that as like a good way to uh, kind of build energy towards a drop or to lead into a breakdown. Um, I think these are really fun to play with but yeah I love using dotted eighth notes as well um, for the time. One other really important thing I want to touch on here is actually about resampling and this is probably the biggest hidden secret in music or the most game changing thing I've ever learned. Um, is actually about resampling and what this is is because in Renoise especially it's so hard to uh, automate all these parameters and record them all in and to kind of fine tune those takes is such meticulous work and it's almost not possible in Renoise. And so what it's done is forced me to adopt this workflow where I just resample things out of the door. And for this I use a program called Twisted Wave and if I just solo this um, uh, kind of breaks instrument what I can do is show you here I ha basically have it so the output of my mixer um, goes back into my interface so I can record anything that's happening through my mixer on my computer and I can just hit recording and then just play this break and see if I turn the volume down then it just records everything that comes through uh, my computer is going into Twisted Wave and so what's so cool about that is I will just record these takes of me live messing with the effects and then just chop them back up and bring them back in my door and it's just a way more fun and just better in every way process than trying to draw this stuff in as automation I find that just so defeating but this is actually the best way to do it so if I just do like a little take here So cool and then what I could go do is just come through this break and chop up the best bits that I like and then I would just bring them back in and this is one I did earlier um, here I would just bring it back in as a new bit of audio and then just re-trigger it and it's just a way better way of capturing these effects so I think resampling if you're not doing it you should be and that's the biggest uh, secret I can give you from all of my break chopping techniques is to get into resampling. One other dope trick we can use to actually enhance this resample passage even further is this phasing trick and in Renoise it's so easy all you do is copy the same uh, note to a new note column so they're playing two notes at the same time and then you just delay one slightly and by delaying at different amounts we can change almost like the tuning of the phasing and if you listen and one other cool thing I've done here is actually to change this phasing as it's playing and this is a little bit more complicated but I've used this SSX command again and so what I've done is just listen to this break and when it gets to this point, I've come into the ruler and trying to figure out where exactly that was. And then I've basically triggered the break again at this new place, but changed its starting position. And then I've changed the phase. So you just, it sounds really complicated, but all I've tried to do is get a different phasing effect as this break's playing through. I've done here is another really cool effect to take this whole thing even further is to mess with the the phrasing sample and to actually uh, resample it again so really kind of putting my money where my mouth is and what I've done is resampled this actual phrasing uh, sample here <laughs> uh, 
And then I've, what I've done is load this into my time stretch effects and these are available on my website. And what I've basically done is you can create these like granular style effects in Renoise by re-triggering uh, the note over and over again at tiny increments. And in this way, by actually speeding this lines per beat value down here, so this should be at 32 for this break to play a little bit more cleanly. But by slowing it down to 16, I can create like a half time feel, but it's got this weird granular um, stretch sound to it. You can also use this effect. I'm doing this on a different hit here. I'm actually doing this on a snare drum. Um, like a phasey snare drum I've taken from that break. And you see I've got even more phrases here. And what some of these are doing. I can create like triplets there, I think is how it sounds to me. And I can create kind of more Akai style stretches and snare rolls. So you can actually mess with what I'm doing here, mainly just playing with these lines per beat values, but also I've created all these different resolutions. You can see I've done, uh, this is like spanning 32 bars, but this one's going over 512. So I created all these presets. So you can grab them um, if you want to get stuck into them on my website. But basically, yeah, using phrases and time stretching techniques in Renoise to create these cool um, effects from the resampled break that we had already resampled. So when I was making this tutorial I was thinking of a way to put these things all together and obviously there's quite a few effects I've left out like filtering and distortion and uh, phasing with like something like Phase Mistress by Sound Toys and there's just obviously when you load like a multi effects plugin there's so many different uh, glitch styling effects or stuttering effects you can do there's lots more left to cover um, but what I actually like to do in Renoise is to set this up manually and I call this like a mega macros instrument but what you can see here is I do this gate tempo method so I can mess with the pitch and the decay and then I've added saturation, downsampling, filtering, I've added a flanger and I've added a single delay effects in here. But what's really crucial with this instrument and what is a bit of a game changer from the way I've set this up before is I have this reset control and what this reset control will do is whenever I turn it on whenever I just move it even a little bit it's going to reset all of these other parameters to their default value and so if I just play a little section here So you can see you can play with like the original break in its default settings and with and with all the effective versions and keep swapping in between. And I think that's really important for creating just a bit more of a usable sound this way. And and yeah, I've just loved playing with this instrument. I might make this available on my Patreon actually. I've used a Decimal Filter Freak and H today in here, but I haven't used too many plugins. And the other really, really important thing when you're setting this up is like I'm playing with the obviously with the min max values of like all of these settings. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm playing with the levels. So like as I'm pulling up saturation in this plugin here, as I'm turning up the preamp, I'm pulling down the output level. And so I'm always trying to level balance these controls. So when I add them in, whatever effect it is, they're being balanced. And I'm doing this with down sampling as well as I bring the kind of uh, sample rate down, which is also gonna almost sound like a filter. I'm also bringing the level back up to compensate for those l loss in frequencies. Um, and when I do this in Filter Freak, the same thing's happening. When I'm bringing this filtering in, I'm like driving the inputs and outputs um, and playing with the resonance. So I think it's really important to actually uh, level balance these controls when you're making like a, your own multi-effects instrument like this. Uh, a to level balance things and B to have a reset control is pretty mad and the last thing is this delay and here I've figured out a way to basically make a one knob delay that was doing all of the things I was doing with like four controls earlier and so if I load up um, 
H delay. I've got a, a send, so you've got to send it from your effects chain to a single lane of a delay. So as I turn this uh, delay value up, you can see the send value actually comes up as well in this control. And as the send goes up, the feedback goes up. And then the actual uh, level, the gain of the plugin before, um, so the amount before the send, that gets turned down. What it means is I can just send this break off, off into the, the kind of delay and have it just sit in there. And then now it's creating that feedback loop. And when I take it off, it kind of stops the whole thing because I pull the feedback back down. And I think it's such an effective way to play with this, um, with a delay control like this, is to have it kind of set up in this way. So um, it's a little bit tricky and fiddly to do, and I've spent a long time fine-tuning these parameters, but I've had a lot of fun with uh, kind of making this mega macros instrument. And what I'm going to do now is just do like a little kind of live performance of me playing through my track um, and just messing with these all, all these controls and that's probably going to be the end of this tutorial So yeah, thank you so much to anyone who's kind of supported me this year on patreon and uh, commented on my videos and uh, Yeah, I've really been trying to build this channel as much as I can I've got really big hopes and ambitions for where we can go next year and beyond and yeah I just really appreciate all the love and support you show me this year So I'll roll out with this tune and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to you all Peace